Hi, and welcome to the wonders of the universe. Today, we'll be watching an interview I had with Tibor from Pulley Space Technologies about how and what to smell on the moon. A link to their website is in the description. Go check them out after the interview for further information. And if you can, support them with some money. Their development is extremely interesting. So without further ado, here's what we talked about. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for making this interview with me. <laughs> That's great for us, uh, for my team and for me as well. So um, your company is named Pooley. Can you tell us a little bit about your company and what you do? Yeah, Pooley is actually an ancient uh, Hungarian uh, dog breed. Uh, so it's a sheep, a shepherd dog. So, so uh, and we chose the name ten years ago because we wanted to have something which is uh, unique, uh, shows that it is Hungarian, and people can spell it out even in the US or somewhere else, and probably they uh, they even know what a, what a Pooley is. And actually. Pulley is a very cheerful and clever dog, so and we think we uh, we can be also in a technical and space-related business cheerful and hopefully clever as well. So uh, Pulley Space is uh, aiming at the moon, actually. So we uh, I founded the, the company 10 years ago just to participate uh, in uh, the Google Lunar X Prize. The uh, Google Lunar X Prize, uh, uh, shortened GLXP, was the largest uh, so-called incentive prize with uh, about $30 million dollars uh, Wow. prize money uh, all together so and uh, the goal was uh, uh, to build a craft uh, send it to the moon and this craft should uh, should go around 500 meters and uh, send back uh, images and videos so that means this is an exploration rover in in under harsh conditions and uh, actually the main the, the real goal of this competition was to show that uh, uh, private financing is able uh, to set up such uh, attempts uh, and it is it can be done uh, cheaper than than in that way and uh, it was uh, a kind of forerunner for uh, many things uh, what are happening right now pulley uh, was we, we were never aiming actually at building a lander uh, because we know that our uh, or resources or uh, or position in Hungary wasn't uh, uh, will not be enough for that. So uh, we just decided to, to work on on the mobility on a planetary mobility system actually, uh, which is a rover and uh, or pulley. Uh, we have built several prototypes. Uh, and we we tested also them uh, uh, in so-called analog tests. Uh, we are working further on 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 the rover. Uh, hopefully, we'll uh, have uh, a taxi. We call it a taxi. Just uh, we have to go somehow to the moon, and we have also a contract with one of our past uh, GLXP teams or competitors. This is Astrobotic, the name I uh, mentioned yeah. earlier. Astrobotic is uh, uh, are good friends for uh, for for us, and uh, we are working closely with them. So when are you planning to send your pulley to the moon? Rover, I don't know at the moment, but we have two other options uh, to send something to the moon. And uh, uh, I will start with the, the, the most probable. So we will be on the first uh, flight of Astrobotic uh, on the Peregrine. Peregrine is the name they land there. And this will be more uh, a cultural project. So we have, uh, we call it a space-time plaque. Uh, so we would like to send about 5 million characters engraved uh, in an aluminium plaque. To be able to read with uh, a 10 times magnifier, so uh, uh, actually you don't need any electronic device. And the second thing, uh, what we uh, hope uh, to send to the moon earlier than a complete rover, we participated uh, uh, this spring uh, in a, uh, a NASA campaign and another challenge. Yeah. It was called uh, "Honey, I Shrunk the NASA." <laughs> Some people maybe uh, remember the movie from the 80s. Movie. So the, the challenge was actually uh, NASA wanted to have ideas and the proposals uh, for little and lightweight uh, measurement uh, systems to search for uh, resources on the moon. And uh, we won the first prize uh, in the lunar resources category with our uh, Pulley Lunar Water Snooper. So Pulley is a dog, so we are uh, snooping for... Yeah water actually and this is a, a very really very simple very lightweight uh, uh, system using actually CMOS camera sensors with special 
coating and uh, we can use the, the measurements uh, uh, provided by this, this uh, sensors of neutrons. Using these different coatings, special coatings on, on the sensors, we can just measure the different energy uh, sector, say how much hydrogen is, is uh, in the regolith. So actually we yeah. can say what is the water content, the water ice content probably uh, in the regolith. And water is uh, one of the holy grails uh, people are looking at uh, because hydrogen and oxygen is water. And if we can just split the, the water into hydrogen and oxygen, we have not only water for possible astronauts uh, 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 and oxygen for, for breathing, but we have also uh, rocket fuel actually and this is, is one of the big things what people uh, think uh, uh, we should uh, achieve on the moon uh, if we don't have to take all the all the, the rocket fuel with us then it will be must much much easier to fly uh, yeah. back and forth to the moon and it will be much easier to to start deep space expeditions actually yeah. Like so, Artemis, yeah. uh, like Artemis, or, or also the Mars missions, because yeah. uh, uh, if we can just uh, uh, fuel uh, that, uh, as a tank station and a gas station, a gasoline station, if you like, just uh, the, for for future missions, uh, to start from the moon from Mars, it's much easier because uh, the gravity is much uh, much less. So that means that we we don't need so much energy. So there's a lot of uh, lot of. Uh, uh, possible advantages and that's the reason that uh, people want to go back to the moon. We have this uh, uh, water snooper instrument uh, uh, in a stage where we think uh, we can make it flight ready in one, one and a half year. So this could be earlier than, than to send a, a rover. I've got two more questions. Um, the plate you're planning to send to the moon, will this be the first piece from Hungary sent to the moon like uh, uh, as whole? Yeah. In the, yeah, yeah, it will be the first uh, first piece uh, directly from Hungary. There is some oh. Hungarian knowledge already on the moon uh, because uh, uh, the uh, Apollo buggies, the, the the Apollo rovers, uh, the cars, if you like, uh, that the chief uh, engineer is a Hungarian actually, yeah. Ferenc Pavlic. Uh, he was working at a, a jet propulsion laboratory at that time, and he was uh, responsible for for this car. So in that okay. sense, uh, is some Hungarian something Hungarian at least. Uh, 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 as a science, a scientific and engineering uh, stuff is already there, but physically this will be the first uh, thing what we would send to the tomb. Now I have to ask you the question from my daughter. <laughs> she was asking, why don't you send a, a real dog? And she was saying, yeah, you can send an elephant, that would be too heavy to snoop for water, but why yeah. not a real dog? <laughs> Uh, elephant would be probably a little bit uh, heavy, so just uh, to make the numbers that uh, the European Space Agency uh, uh, started uh, uh, thinking about a so-called European Lunar Lander, uh, EL3, which will be able to send about 1.5 tons, so uh, 5,100 kilograms uh, payload uh, to the moon. So maybe that would be <laughs> closer to an elephant. A, a dog, a pulley is about 10, 15 kilograms, and this will be also the mass of our, our over actually, so depending on the, on the final measures. But it, uh, you can tell your daughter that uh, first we don't want to, to send uh, a dog. Uh, uh, first, uh, we would like to send some robots because the moon is uh, not a nice place without uh, special uh, instruments. So, so uh, the dog would need uh, air, would need uh, uh, a kind of spacesuit, uh, and then this is what we don't want to do. But I pretty sure that in maybe 30, 40 years there will be dogs on the moon as well. <laughs> nice place to go then. <laughs> uh, then hopefully. <laughs> and another question. You um, mentioned Mars and that you could snoop for water on Mars. Do you have any plans or any goals to reach Mars? Uh, Mars time? is definitely on on, uh, on on the radar, but it's not not uh, the next uh, future. The much is uh, Mars is uh, far far away, and uh, uh, so the, there are three uh, Mars uh, uh, probes going uh, into space, and this is because there is every uh, two years a so-called uh, uh, launch window when Mars and Earth uh, have special positions that uh, means that we can send uh, space with uh, less energy uh, uh, to Mars. So if we will be able to build a, uh, a colony or some, some bases on the moon in the next 10 years, then we might see also some, some uh, uh, spacecraft starting from moon and maybe then we will have also a, a, 
kind of pulley in that the, yeah. uh, that version. So it will be definitely a bit different than. Um, pulley rover. It doesn't have uh, legs or wheels, but you call them wax. I remember that now yeah, correctly. This is, this is wax. This is a, a wheel and leg, and this is the combination of wax, which is there. The concept uh, is there, but it's uh, not many things are, are using that, and we choose it because uh, if we would be able to uh, to set up a lander, uh, definitely not a, a, a soft landing. So that's an air airbag landing, uh, maybe. And then we thought, okay, if we would have an airbag landing on the moon similar what uh, on Mars has been uh, yeah. done earlier, then we will end up uh, in a crater. So uh, we have to just climb out of that crater. And that was the reason we started to check uh, various uh, mobility systems. And we said, okay, wax are uh, actually uh, a good stuff. And we have a lot of uh, design and uh, at least five different versions uh, uh, until we just uh, came up with, with this uh, peach formed uh, uh, end which is actually also the suspension systems and then it's very simple we have in an ideal case only these four moving part on the rover so that's uh, it's it's uh, extremely simple uh, very robust uh, and we had tested it in various uh, really moon like uh, environments and uh, uh, we know that uh, we really can climb uh, 35 40 uh, grade uh, slopes uh, so it's it's pretty good we can also climb over stairs so it is always a funny thing if we yeah. make some demonstrations we don't expect to have uh, stairs on the moon but who knows not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, we can can go to places where other rovers probably not. And how did you come up with the idea to just combine these two things? Uh, we just checked a lot of stuff. One of our colleagues just uh, pointed out that this was the first attempt, maybe 1996, uh, by ESA for a Mars rover, just uh, uh, to mimic something from, from the animal world. Very simple toy. It was just really a ready controlled uh, car like uh, stuff, uh, which uh, looked very, very strange. Uh, and uh, But uh, this was just a test for us to see uh, uh, can we move with the sticks and uh, is it uh, stable enough. And uh, after we just lost actually two of these early wax and we still were able uh, uh, to climb and to go oh, wow. inside okay so even if the pulley uh, would lose two of his uh, uh, or its wax uh, we are still able to to move so that says okay that the concept is fine currently we are using the kevlar composite material uh, for for this peach form set or if somebody was uh, in budapest and used the metro we are also um, uh, accused just uh, to have stolen the, the metro uh, uh, stuff that you can can keep yourself safely. So, but it's not. We didn't. Uh, <laughs> we didn't. That, so. Hungarian metro on the moon. <laughs> yep. Why you want to bring Hungary to the moon? Yeah. So, US want to go. Wants to go back. Want to bring people uh, in. 2024 to the moon. It's Artemis project. The woman, the first woman, should go to the moon. Yeah. I don't know if the, if the, the human flight will be ready for 2024. Uh, it, it's it's a very very harsh deadline. Mm -hmm and uh, it's uh, financing whatever else. And uh, we have also the, the, the pandemic situation, which yeah. still uh, has, uh, of course, influence on all this project, but the goal is still there. And yeah. the robot explorations will go to next year, uh, uh, probably five uh, robotic exploration will go to the moon. And in 21, we'll see probably five launches, uh, 22, uh, at least two or three. So it will be uh, a mass transport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this. This year, Mars, next year, and yeah, the following Space moon. is sexy. I, I say yeah. space is uh, sexy and uh, is getting really very interesting right yeah. now. Also, our uh, water snooper is just an example. Oh, you really can shrink uh, measurements. You can just make uh, everything smaller. So you, you don't uh, need to have a huge uh, rovers. The, the Russian uh, moon rovers, the Luna Hots in the early 60s, 70s, they were one ton. Uh, they worked extremely well, but uh, you don't need uh, that that big stuff, right? Yeah. So, uh, message is also uh, and there's also the, the actually what what the German friends from us, the planetary transport system guy says, everybody can participate. It so just yeah. uh, uh, not only the big space powers, so small countries, small companies yeah. uh, can do something really interesting stuff go for space space is sexy yeah, yeah. and we might even see a, a hop today from elon musk so yeah maybe the moon goal is closer than we think yeah it's every day one step closer <laughs>
What was the moment that sparked your interest in space? It must How have, did you fall in love? In my, my childhood, I don't uh, don't uh, know it exactly. I, I was uh, grew up in the in the 60s, uh, so I have seen uh, in the second half of the 60s uh, already with, with my mind. Uh, so that's the space flight, the, the the astronauts, the cosmonauts. I have been following the uh, Apollo missions uh, as nine years old. The child just uh, excited, uh, jumping around. That's hope they they are the moon yeah. so this is definitely something which uh, uh, what, what influenced me and i remember also very nice uh, uh, hungarians are going to lake balaton so uh, many germans knows that as well so that's uh, we spent also uh, every year two weeks or something like that and uh, one year we went to a movie which was just a uh, free uh, air movie so and uh, we were going uh, back to our home and it was a, a fantastic night so a uh, wonderful starry uh, sky of course that time it was much less uh, illumination so that uh, this is something what i i never forget so uh, such a nice uh, starry sky so maybe that was that moment where uh, i uh, i just got the feeling i have to go to the stars so i have to uh, to check uh, what what can i do later just uh, going to the stars and it remained right? I think that this is something very important to just to keep this curiosity alive in yourself. So that's uh, the child, the children are curious. And if we can keep this curiosity during all, uh, all life. Do you have some inspirational words for people that want to, to go into space and study something that they can yeah, uh, get part I, for? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, actually, uh, if I'm allowed to, to, to say two, one of them is from Hermann Hesse. Yeah. To, to let the possible happen, you have to try the impossible again and again. So this is just in a kind of perseverance or uh, and, and enduring. So just as you keep on going. And the second thing is actually from Count Sechen. He, he is sometimes called the, 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 the greatest Hungarian from the 19th century. Uh, he started uh, to build the Academy of Sciences and a lot of other stuff mid 19th century. And he said also, everything is hard for one nothing is impossible for money so yeah. then this is something i think we can use it's really just uh, put the the forces together the, the strengths together and uh, cooperation um, and uh, common work together this is always something which is good and it's even extremely good to go to the stars become part of it yeah that's <laughs> cool so uh, young kids and children physics math can be sexy it's not just for uh, geeks, it's really, really fun. And uh, if you do, uh, for instance, this, this kind of uh, analog testing, then you can uh, experience really extremely nice stories. Do you want to add anything? Do you have something you want to... Go to the stars. Let's go to the stars. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If there's one thing this interview has taught us again, it's that sometimes the best ideas come from the smaller teams. With a little luck, Pooley will make science with an incredibly small budget, but extremely smart engineering. This is exactly why learning about space can be so very interesting. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week for another installment of Wonders of the Universe. And always remember to subscribe, like and comment if you want to see more. Have a wonderful week.